This is the never-ending cucumber plant. I have been picking at least, yes, that one's yellow because I'm saving it for seed. I have been picking at least 15 to 20 a day, sharing, making recipes that I'm sharing with you, sharing with family and friends, and they just keep on coming. What a beautiful plant this has been. I've got two different ones. I've got the standard cucumbers and then the English cucumbers. And as you can see, this plant goes on forever. I don't even know where to put my feet. But I have just picked myself a bucket of them. It's a two and a half kilogram bucket and another squash. And I'm gonna go inside and make some relish with you. Well, here's the start to the relish. I am going to wash these well. I actually love to use these nail scrub brushes um, because they're soft, but they do clean all the little crevices really well because I am going to use the peel in this recipe. So I wanna make sure it's nicely clean. Now, all I'm doing here is cutting up the cucumbers, taking out the seeds in the middle, and mincing very finely. The idea is to mince it finely, but not puree it. So we have ended up here with eight cups. I just want to make sure. Yep, eight cups. Now, we, this is going to get a little watery, and that is absolutely fine. So I'm going to transfer this into a stainless steel bowl so I can mix in the other ingredients. I am going to dice up the same consistency as the cucumbers one onion and one bell pepper. Now, I was gonna use this extra shepherd pepper, but I'm not going to need to because I think I had one and a half red bell peppers um, that I could use, so I did use that instead. This is a really large onion. Um, but you know what? I'm fine with that. We're going to use the whole thing. Nothing wrong with a good onion. Like I said, this recipe is forgiving. So you can alter things along the way as you see fit based on the amount of vegetables you have. It's all good. Just going to blend that up. Again, pulsing, because I don't want to hear it. I want them finely chopped, but I don't want a puree. We'll call that good. That's how I like it. Adding that to my cucumbers. was also making some sofrito. So I've already blended or chopped up my red peppers. So I'm gonna add those in now. This is one and a half bell pepper, same consistency. It's a little bit more than a lot of people use for a green relish, but I like it that way. And my kitchen, my rules, your kitchen, your rules. This is where we're looking. So I'm gonna mix this up really well. See, I like doing it with my hands because then when you come across chunks that are a little bit too big, you can take them up. And the only way you're gonna do that is by feel. Oh, the smell is so fresh. I love this. I'm just gonna wash my hands. 
So here we have it, all our ingredients, nicely minced. I am going to add to this batch um, just under a quarter cup of sea salt. Now that seems like a lot of salt, but not to worry because this is going to sit overnight and it will pull out the moisture out of the cucumber. And then that way will drain off that liquid and that liquid will have a lot of the salt. But as you mix this, you'll notice it getting waterier and waterier and that's what you want. You wanna pull out that excess water. Already it's starting to get very watery. Smells so good. Oh my goodness, I could just grab a spoon. There we go. So now what we're doing, besides moving stuff out of my way, is we've mixed that salt in. We're gonna let this sit for 24 hours. And this is the beauty of this recipe. When you have your cucumbers going nuts in the garden, you can do this, it takes 20 minutes, and then the next day you can finish the process. So you don't have to feel like um, you have to let the cucumbers sit because you've just picked them. Do this, add the salt, and then finish the process the next day. Easy enough to do. And it's a very quick process. Now you can see that I have a lot of red pepper in there. And if you don't like that look, you want more of that green relish with those specks of red pepper, use a lot less red pepper. Simple enough. Now you should cover this and put it in the fridge. I like to use my containers because I put a lid on them. I don't have to use saran wrap or foil to seal. Let's not end up on the floor, thanks. There we go. I'll tell you, this relish is so fantastic. If you're making like tuna sandwiches or egg salad sandwiches, you take a scoop of this and you add it to it. It's like instant seasoning. It's such a versatile product. It's not just like a store-bought relish. Come on, why would you want to use that when you can make your own? Seriously, even if you're not growing your cucumbers, grab some at the farmer's market and do this and you're happy, happy. So I'm gonna seal it up with the cover, place it in the fridge. Tomorrow, when I have a chance, I'll finish it up. Yeah, this is too good to pass up. I'm making tuna sandwiches for lunch. Take some of that. I won't be adding any salt because this is pretty salty. Adding it to my celery. We're having tuna sandwiches for lunch. You see here the next morning, the liquid has started to come out of the vegetables. Uh, what we're going to do is drain this and lightly rinse it just to make sure that it's not over salty. And we're gonna squeeze it as dry as possible. Well, we were gonna do our relish, but I just thought, you know what? While I'm in the kitchen, let's get some other stuff done. Look at the beautiful broccoli I'm getting out of the garden right now. This is the second week of October and they're, the florets are just beautiful. They're super tender and I've got lots. So I am um, kind of overwhelmed with duck eggs right now. So I decided to make myself a quiche and I'm gonna put this in the oven while we're working on the relish. So here is my quiche batter. Um, I can one day, sit down and do a video on how I make this. Um, there's basically cream, cheese, eggs, broccoli, bacon, and I bake it as a crustless quiche. Uh, so I'm gonna get this into a 325 degree oven and bake this while we're working. Let me get that in. And 
and I just check that for doneness as I go along. So what we're gonna do is I'll just get stuff organized and I will show you how we do the finishing touches to our relish, which we started yesterday. But now we're gonna rinse off and drain all the cucumber and vegetables and make the syrup. Well, now we do have our cucumbers drained really nicely, ready to go. I am going to start off with um, lemon juice. The recipe calls for half a cup of white wine vinegar or white vinegar. Now I find that I like the flavor of lemon juice better. So, and I've been doing this for years and I have never had a jar go bad. So the lemon juice as a replacement to vinegar is good. I do half a cup. These are freshly squeezed lemons, but I also add just a touch of um, apple cider vinegar, just to bring up that acidity a little bit. Um, I make my own apple cider vinegar and because it is apple season, I will be doing a video shortly. So please hit that notify and when I'm doing the apple cider vinegar, you can come along and make some for yourself. Go to the store, get some apples. In a couple of months, you'll have your own apple cider vinegar, which is so much better, so much cheaper than the one you're getting in the store. Now, I have my liquids here. To this, I am going to add um, two teaspoons of cornstarch. Now, I use organic cornstarch, and the reason I do that is most corn products are GMO, and I try so hard to avoid anything that's GMO. So what I do is if I can buy organic, I will. And cornstarch is one of those things. Sometimes you have to look for it, but you do find it. Just get a whisk to make sure I blend that cornstarch in nicely. There we go. That's perfect. I have not turned on the flame yet. I am just putting in my ingredients first of all. Um, I then am going to add to this three quarter cups of sugar. And again, I do use organic sugar, organic cane sugar. So I um, buy it in bulk, of course. Just a little bit more. A little awkward to do this on video. So my sugar is a little darker than the typical white sugar from the store. Now what we're going to be doing in our springtime, because this is October, so next spring, we will be making maple sugar. Not maple syrup, but maple sugar. We did do maple syrup the first time this year, and it was fantastic, and if at some point we can replace our sugar consumption from buying it from the store and make our own maple sugar and replace buying sugar, I think that makes us that much more self-sufficient. Love that idea and I plan to do it. Now that I'm just going to turn on a very low flame and keep adding the rest of the spices. Now. The recipe is very limited in spices, but I like to add a little bit more. I'm gonna do about half a teaspoon of celery seed. And I don't know, let's do a half a teaspoon of mustard seed. I like the flavor of mustard seeds, especially through relishes. And I'm gonna do a um, quarter teaspoon of turmeric, but I like turmeric and it's so healthy for you. So I'm gonna probably do more than, oh, uh, let's, let's do a full rounded teaspoon. I like these little espresso spoons. Um, they're not a good measurement, but um, I do like them for pulling out, especially turmeric because of course the spoon is now stained and I wanna make sure that um, I'm not putting it into other spices. This is good. I'm just thinking, do I need anything else? Oh, we do need dill. And what I did is I took some dill 
dehydrated it. Yep, this is still. Um, dehydrated it and then blended it in the Vitamix because I don't always have fresh dill and I definitely don't want it out of the store. So here we go. That's again, my measuring. Um, you should be using half a teaspoon as per the recipe. Um, it's vegetable canning, it's not baking. I think I'll be good. So now I'm going to add my vegetables to this and I'm going to change over to a spoon so I could stir this up. You heard me rattling because I was looking, I have one spoon that I use for curry, which is always tinted in yellow, and because I'm using turmeric here, I thought, well, I use that one, but I didn't find it and I didn't want to keep you waiting. So now what I'm going to do, as you can see, um, I am going to bring this to a boil. And once it is boiling, I'm going to cook it for 10 minutes. 10 minutes will help the cornstarch thicken up. Um, it will, more liquids will come out of the vegetables. You notice I did not add any water. Um, the idea was to take the water out. Remember, that's why I was draining the vegetables. So the sugar will get into the vegetables. The spices will get into the vegetables. The cornstarch will help it thicken in a syrup. Some people, instead of using cornstarch, will use clear gel. Um, I've never used clear gel. Um, that's not something that I'm accustomed to, so I can't say either way. But we're gonna let this come up to a boil. And while this is gonna do its 10 minute cook, I'm gonna get some jars ready for packing. I'm trying to decide how many jars, so I'm not gonna get very many out of this batch. My last batch was three times this amount. Um, I'm gonna get, I'll get five jars ready and I definitely won't use five jars, but I'd rather have more ready than not enough. So I will come back with you as soon as the jars are ready and we're ready to pack this up. Well, my goodness, does it ever smell good in here right now? Um, this has been cooking just over 10 minutes. It is nicely thick. I'm shutting off the flame and I'm going to start uh, placing them into the jars. Um, I've got five jars ready. I think it's more than enough. We shall see together how good my guesstimate is. I know that I should not fill up five jars, but let's see what happens. Just bring you down so you can actually see what I'm working on. I am using the 250 milliliter jars because I find that's perfect for things like relishes. Um, you don't use that much of a product, so you don't want to um, have a huge jar open. Well, hello, Heidi. Are you coming to see what's going on? Hi, baby girl. Heidi just got neutered, uh, spayed, not neutered. That was Prince that got neutered. Um, she just got spayed, so she is wanting to be outside and she can't be, so she's a little frustrated. And I can't blame her because Jersey and Prince are out there playing and here she is stuck inside. I'm just going to debubble these because I wanna make sure, and I think I put way too much into that jar. Let's take it out. This is real life. You get distracted and you screw up. Um, I like to debubble anything that I'm canning. Um, it's actually a requirement and a recommendation, but a lot of people don't do it. I just find it helps the product settle, make sure that there's no bubbles in there so that when it seals, it seals nicely. I got the funnel right in the way and you can't see shit. There you go. So get the next one ready. Debubble that one. And it looks like we're right at five jars. Pretty damn good guesstimate. 
Oh, I was sneaking on purpose. Awesome. I'm leaving a half inch headspace at the top. And even though I was using the funnel, you never know if you mess up. I'm gonna grab a piece of paper towel and some apple cider vinegar. And I'm just going to clean the rim. And what I'm doing is ensuring that there is no sugar or um, food residue. And it makes sure that the seal is good. My lids are washed. Putting these on. And these are going into a water bath for 20 minutes or so. So I will wait until the water is boiling and then I will time it. Now, this is what we end up with. Our beautiful homemade relish from our cucumbers and our peppers and onions. You can't beat um, homemade. You just can't. Once you've made your own relish, I don't think you're going to want to um, go and buy, you know, the little tiny ones that you get together with the mustard and ketchup. I just pulled this out of the fridge. This is the one I made um, about a month ago. Now, I just want to show you what it looks like. This one has a little bit less red pepper, so it's a little bit more green, but it's a pleasant, fresh smell. And you don't need this just for hot dogs and hamburgers. I find that this is fantastic when you're doing egg salad or uh, potato salad, tuna salad, those kind of meals and you wanna give it a little zip, this is a good way to do it. Anyway, I'm gonna put that in my water bath canner. You don't need to see how that's done. It goes into a water bath, bring it up to a boil, 20 minutes later, shut it off, wait till it cools a little, take it out. Once the jars are cooled and sealed, I will take the bands off, label them, and into the pantry they go. So I think I'm gonna be doing that apple cider very shortly and I want you to join me. So please subscribe, get notified and share with your friends. I think your friends would like to make some apple cider vinegar too. So why wouldn't you share this information with them? It's all about sharing and living your best life.